Hello artists! This week we are going to be talking all about Georgia O'Keeffe. Now Georgia O'Keeffe is one of my personal favorite artists because she liked to do her own thing. She was very unique, very original. She did not like to copy what other people were doing. Now Georgia O'Keeffe loved things in nature. She loved taking something ordinary like a flower or a tree, a leaf, and even sometimes bones, which sounds weird, but it was actually really beautiful. She would take these different objects and make them go from ordinary to extraordinary. So here's some examples. Here are some of her flowers. Again, she liked to paint big and close up. Unlike Jackson Pollock, she was very drawn to the lines and the shapes on the different items. There's one more flower. There we go. So again, you can see those lines, shapes, and the colors that she uses. Now we're gonna get ready to read a book called Georgia's Bones. And in here, you can kind of see how she was drawn to different lines, shapes, and you even hear her talk about space. So the um, space in between the bones, the positive and the negative space. Okay, so listen closely and then we'll get started on our activity. Georgia's Bones, written by Jen Bryant. As a child, shapes often drifted in and out of Georgia's mind. Curved and straight, round or square, she studied them and let them disappear. In the woods, around her father's Wisconsin farm, she collected shapes flowers, leaves, sticks, and stones. She put them in her pocket and took them home. Such common objects, said her brother. Why do you bother? Asked her sister. Because they please me, Georgia replied. Spaces please Georgia too. Windows and doors, dents and holes, places she could see into or through. When her mother made donuts, her brothers and sisters gobbled them down as fast as they could. But Georgia nibbled the outside all the way around, saving the perfect circle in the middle for last. More of Georgia's silly notions, said her mother, but Georgia didn't care. Someday I'm going to be an artist, she would declare. And that's exactly what she did. When Georgia grew up, she moved to New York City and rented a studio on the top floor. From her window, she saw many different shapes, tall and thin, short and fat, round and square. She studied them and then painted them with care. She gathered seashells by the shore, kept them in the drawer so she could remember the sand and the waves. On the rainy day, she took them out and looked at their shapes and spaces. They please me, she told her city friends. So she painted them too. <clears throat> One day, a letter came from her friend out west. Will you come for a visit? Georgia replied, yes. In New Mexico, the sky was the sea, huge and blue. The clouds were waves, light and foamy, rolling slowly across it. No two looked the same. Georgia studied their shapes, the puffed up ones thick as snow banks, the wispy ones that swirled over the Spanish church as if someone had painted them there with a milk dipped feather. She noticed the hills and mountains, the houses and rivers and watched their colors change each day as the sun flung itself across the sky. In the desert, she picked up the bones of animals, of cows and horses, pigs and sheep, put them in a sack and would take them home. She cleaned them one by one, then held them up to the sun. They gleamed with a white light, pure and bright like the silver of the moon, then crept over the mountains at night and hung there a perfect curve like a rib over the sleeping desert. She didn't know why they pleased her so. Perhaps it was the quiet way they did their work, the years of being invisible, and then when everything fell away, they appeared bright and beautiful. 
Sometimes she would look at her own hand and imagine the bones inside doing her important work, holding everything together. Some bones were straight, others curved, worn smooth by wind and sand. A few worn so thin that when she held them up, she could see the sun through them. The holes in the bones pleased Georgia too. They made frames and windows through which she glimpsed a piece of the sky or a tiny corner of a mountain. When her visit to the desert was over, Georgia filled a wooden barrel with sun-bleached bones, each one tagged and labeled, and shipped them to New York City. There in her studio, she took them out, put them on a stand where she could see them and remember the quiet desert, the sand and the wind, the clouds and distant mountains, and she painted them with care. We have read about Georgia O'Keeffe and we know that she was drawn to the lines and shapes of simple ordinary objects. Let's take a closer look at some of her paintings. So on this slide you will see two of her flower paintings. Notice they're up close. These paintings in real life are very large. She also uses a lot of value. Value is the, I'm gonna point out right here with my cursor, watch that, is the lightness or darkness of something. It makes things look more 3D. We're gonna use that in a minute, but I want you to really focus on the lines and the shapes. Now, when we look at this one, again, you see more of those big, bold, up close paintings. She would take something so simple so, so simple, like a little flower outside and make it look super extraordinary the way she used her colors and her lines. So during these next ones, I want you to look and let's think about what lines do you see? Okay, so take a second. When you look at this flower right here, what do you see? Do you see a zigzag line? Yeah, do you see one that goes zigzag, zigzag, zigzag all the way around to make the flower? There are small zigzags, large zigzags. Now let's look at this picture. Again, these ones are not paintings by her. This one's an actual photograph. What line do you see on this flower? Can you see like a bumpy line? Almost like a bunny? It goes around and around, and you see how it starts out small, and then it gets larger and larger. Okay, I got one more for you. What about this one? What line do you see on this flower? Okay, are you seeing the zigzag again? You have some very small zigzags, some larger zigzags. Notice this one starts with a circle. In just a minute, we're gonna be drawing our own flower inspired by George O'Keefe, and we're gonna start ours off with a circle as well. I want you to pick a line. Okay, now we have learned about lots of different ones, but I want you to be thinking which line you'd like to do. So I want you to go grab some art supplies for me, okay? We are going to be needing some paper, a pencil, a black marker if you have it, and then I want you to grab some crayons. Now, since you're at home or at um, if you're at someone's house or daycare, grab what you have, okay? I'm going to use crayons, but if you have something you'd like to use instead, go for it. Okay? So, if you remember our book from last week, Lines That Wiggle, let's think about some of those lines we saw in our book. Because in just a second, we are going to get ready to draw our own flower like George O'Keefe. We're going to draw a flower that is big, bold, and is made up of lines. So, here I have a zigzag line. Remember, there were wavy lines. What else? You could do one that's really wavy, little, big. What else do you remember? Do you remember the curly line? What about wavy? Or I just did that one, didn't I? Oops. That's okay. We can do it again. Let's see. We could do broken lines. Dotted lines. Now, when we're in school, everyone's favorite, I'm gonna flip mine over. Everyone's favorite is the castle line or box line. It goes over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down. We can even just do a straight line, right? Or curved, 
lines, just like I said in the book, are everywhere we look. So I want you to pick, I'm gonna do one line, okay? I want you to pick one line. Now on yours, you could do a combination, but what I've found is that it turns out best if I just use one or two types of line. And what you're gonna do is I'm gonna take my black marker because you can see it very well in the video. Remember, you can use a pencil if you prefer. And I'm gonna draw a circle in the middle of my paper. It's about the size of a quarter. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna choose a wavy line. And I'm gonna draw a line all the way around. Okay, now I'm gonna do another one. Now I'm moving up a little bit. And I'm gonna keep going. Remember, Georgia O'Keeffe's flowers were large and bold. Sometimes they would go off of her canvas, and that's okay. We're gonna make it go off our paper. So I'm gonna add one more line and see how it's gonna peek off the side. Come over this way. Again, that is okay. There we go. Now I'm gonna go in and let's add a leaf. One, two, again, more lines. Straight and curved lines. Let's see, let's add one, two right here. Like that. And we'll add one more over here. Now say you did not want to do a wavy line. Let's do another one. So I'm gonna slide this guy over to the side. Let's try doing a zigzag. So same thing, you're gonna start with the circle in the middle, about the size of a quarter, and do your zigzag line. Again, pick one line, and if you need to turn the paper, that might help as well. The zigzag line, it helps to turn it. Again, it's big and bold, just like Georgia O'Keeffe. This line a little bit closer together. There we go, same thing. Leaf. Leaf over here. Now you could add a stem, being that you're the artist at home, but that's up to you. Let's do one more. What if I want to do, and I forgot to put this on my list earlier, a bumpy line. Same thing, circle. And you're gonna do a bumpy line. And you could have it come all the way down and touch. This is just how I'm gonna do mine. So again, our learning purpose is to be able to recognize lines in artwork. So if I'm doing my learning purpose, I know that I'm using a bumpy line here. I used a zigzag line in my other one. And that's why I would say to use a placemat as well. That's why I added that in the instructions. Okay, so now I am ready to color. Now I'm gonna use crayons, but you could use whatever you have or would like to use as long as it's okay with your parents or the adult there, okay? So I'm gonna pull out my crayons. Now, one thing that you may have noticed on Georgia O'Keeffe's work is she uses what we call contrast, okay? So that being said, she has um, very vibrant colors on her flowers, but there's normally one color in the background. So I'm gonna worry about the background in just a minute, but let's get in there on the flower. So I'm gonna go in and color it in. Notice I'm going up and down or side to side, but I'm going in one direction. I'm not coloring very big because if I do, I will miss some places. I want it to be very nice and neat. Let's see, what color do I want this flower to be? 
Let's do some warm colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple in there. There we go. So I've picked out some warm colors, and like I said, I added purple. I think that will look nice. Let's see. So I'm gonna go in and color it. Again, small passes. Now, one thing you may remember when we read the book, George's Bones, she was drawn to the light of things or the value. Not only did she like the shape and the line on it, she wanted to be sure that she represented the color well. So she used a lot of value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this same crayon and I'm gonna go in and kind of go around the edges nice and dark and kind of fade that in. And it's just gonna kind of liven it up a little bit. And I'm easing off as I get back down here. So same thing, I'm gonna do a little dark at the top. And be easy on your crayons. You don't wanna break them. But just enough to get that little extra. And you'll see it kind of livens it up a little bit. Which is why we use value a lot. I'm kind of moving with the curve. I'm kind of fading out. Again, I'm pressing down a little harder to get the dark value. Because that's one thing that makes Georgia Keeps work so special. She takes ordinary things that we have around us and she makes them look extraordinary. Sometimes with the lines, sometimes with the color. Here we go, one more. And I mean, I could even do that on the circle. What if I took this yellow orange and I added some on the side? Nice and light. So we call this blending when we add another color on there. So guys, I'm gonna keep coloring. Um, when you're working on your flower, um, remember you could use whatever colors you would like, but we're gonna pick one color to put on the background. Okay, that way our flowers really pop because when you look at Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings, her main focus is the flower. Okay, so go ahead and keep on coloring for me. So just a reminder, to create the value, I started by coloring lightly to get the base, and then I went over on top with a little bit more pressure and eased off. I did the same thing on the leaves, and you'll notice I used the two different greens. Now remember, you don't have to do yours exactly like mine, but that is how I did complete my drawing. Now I'm gonna pull out my bag of my favorite broken crayons. And I want to, again, like Georgia O'Keeffe did, I want to create contrast. Now, contrast is when 
um, something stands out, it's normally opposite. So here I have warm colors. So now I'm gonna pick a color that I didn't use. So I'm gonna go with blue for me. Now say you did a blue flower, then I would not do blue again because then you won't be able to see your flower. So I'm gonna use this blue color. Because if I use purple, it's just all gonna kind of blend in. Now you'll notice in the instructions, I also added that you may want to get a placemat. This is where I would use it. So I'm just gonna slide it underneath there. And just like we've been doing, I'm gonna lay it on the side and just kind of go around. And like I've already said multiple times, you don't have to do it this way. This is just how I do mine. As long as you use, like I could even, I could probably get away with yellow, but it wouldn't show up in my video too well. But using a color that I did not use very much in my flower. So turn it on the side and fill in that space in. There we go. I don't know if you can see it.